Hi, this is Jim with Adirondack Technology. Just wanted to take a minute today. I get a lot of questions about license plate capture and there's quite a bit that goes into it. So I just wanted to take a minute, bring everybody up to speed so that when you're out on the job and you're looking at a particular site, you can say, okay, it's got to be done this way or it's got to be done that way. But anyways, we'll start with um, camera placement. Camera placement is going to be based on the type of camera that you use. There's a verifocal lens and there's a fixed lens. The fixed lens cameras, I, I don't carry those because it, it, it seems very hard to move a pole to exactly where you need it and it gets expensive when you tell somebody to put a pole somewhere. So we use the verifocal lens and uh, that gives us a little bit more room. It's like up to about 75-80 feet is the distance that you can work with on it. Um, and the distance, what, what you want to do is you want to pick an area where the vehicle has to travel through. So you want to cover an area about the width of the bumper of a vehicle. So if you got two lanes, then you either want to focus on getting the cars as they come in or getting the cars as they go out. You don't want to try and cover two lanes with one camera. It's just not going to work. Um, and then most of the plates are in the center of a rear bumper nowadays and people usually don't drive on the grass. So like the first two feet of the edge of a driveway you don't need to cover that and the other two feet you don't need to cover so you can kind of focus a little bit more toward the center that's usually where the plate will be so once you've picked an area where you're going to cover the next thing that you've got to do is you got to say okay you know where are we going to put the camera and the idea is to keep your angles low you want to keep your camera as low as possible and as close to being either behind the car or lined up with the car as possible the higher you are, the more off-center you are, the more challenging it's going to be to get a good, clean image with that plate. The more in line you are with it, the more room for error you're going to have to be able to get the plate right. So this is an example of a plate camera that we would utilize. And uh, there's a couple things going on here. Number one, you're going to notice it's got a lot of white light in it. These infrared illuminators in the front are not infrared, they are white and what that does is it allows us just to leave them on all the time and uh, we illuminate the back of the plate 24 hours a day seven days a week the other thing that you run into is we have to set the shutter speed in the camera for the speed of the traffic it seems like right around four to five thousandths is about right if you put it there um, whether your point in east or west comes into it just a little bit if you've got glare from the sun, you're going to be closer to four. If you don't have glare from the sun, you're going to be closer to five or six thousandths shutter speed. Um, and what that does is it opens and closes a shutter super fast. So the picture is uh, doesn't have a chance to smear. The low light cameras, as the vehicle drives through at night, you get a smear. The image smears. And that's from your shutter speed. So what we want to do is we want to set the shutter speed very, very fast. Now, the downfall to setting a fast shutter speed is at night we can't see anything. That's why we need all the white light. So the perfect combination comes out of an adjustment of putting the vehicle in a particular area, getting the camera low and in line, and what I mean by low and in line is you know, don't, don't put it 20 feet in the air. Get, get it down around 7, 8 feet, somewhere in that neighborhood, and get in front of the car as much as possible, or behind. And um, then we have the shutter speed and the provided illumination. If you're too far away from the plate, if you, if you try to hang this thing at 130 feet away, 140 feet, what's going to happen is there's not going to be enough light. So when your shutter speed's banging real quick, you're, you're not going to get an image because the white light can't reach that far. Um, and then the camera will get the plate when it's configured properly. You will read the plate. Now, there's another step to this. The next and final step in plate capture is the recording device. Now, if you go back, oh, five, six, seven years ago, you'd see an awful lot of recorders were PC-based. And most of the recorders nowadays, they've all gone to embedded Linux-based units. And uh, I gotta tell you, there's some places where you just can't get away with an embedded unit. You have to step up to a PC. And this is one of those cases. Now, an embedded unit, I've tested 
Oh, we've done, I, I gotta tell you, we've probably tested a dozen embedded units with license plate capture. JPEG machines, H.264, MPEG, uh, at Motion JPEG, if anybody remembers that recording algorithm. And, you know, you, it just smears it. Once you get over about five to seven miles an hour, it smears the picture. And um, there's just nothing you can do about it. So if we move into a particular PC-based recorder that, that we make available, that we have, um, it allows us to take control of the recording algorithm. The, the unit that we typically specify for it is we use a GeoVision machine. And there's an area in GeoVision with the PC-based units where you can actually go in and you can get a hold of the keyframes, you can get a hold of the pixel rate, you can get a hold of everything in the recording algorithm. And I'm not going to say another machine doesn't does it. I'm going to tell you I haven't seen another machine that does it. So because we can get a hold of the keyframes, and the keyframe is uh, the way recording works is it says, okay, here's a picture, here's the next picture, what's changed from the first one? That, that's how the, the compression algorithms work. And what I can tell the particular recorder that we use if we have high speed is I can say, okay, every picture stands on its own. And that's where your motion JPEGs and your JPEGs and so forth, they really, they, they kind of fall down. The MPEGs fall down, the H.264, all of those compression algorithms are meant for motion video. They're not meant for still video footage. You would think the JPEG would be, but I, I, I've tried it. I can't make it work. So... If we roll into the Geo machine and we use a particular camera with the proper illumination and the, the proper uh, fixed rate with the shutter speed, um, I have myself witnessed with our package a crystal clear license plate at 60 miles an hour. And I mean crystal clear. Can't miss it. So if you put all these packages together with license plate capture, it can be done, it can be done very well. I'm doing some beta testing on some megapixel products, but they're much, much harder to get right. The illumination is much trickier, the frame rate is much trickier, the recording algorithms are much trickier. I don't have it yet, and I'm working on it. But right now, the best solution that I have available is an analog product. Um, and again, I won't go over the specifics again, but you kind of got the idea. If, if you're at really, really low speeds and or stopped, you can get away with a lot. Um, if the vehicle's moving much faster than five or six miles an hour, that's where you, you, you got to stop and think about what you're doing. And uh, we got to deploy, we got to deploy some, some experience to it. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be glad to help you in any way that I can. As your angles get higher and steeper and all these things, I've messed with it. So feel free to reach out to me and uh, we'll get you a package that's going to work for you. Um, again, it's Jim with Adirondack. I appreciate your time, and as always, I hope you have a real good day. Thanks, now.